Um, I'm staying put with where I've been, which is a starting pitcher. Tanner Houck last night, not great. He's been trending in a direction where over his last four outings, his ERA is at, is, has been over 2.5, 2.5 over his last four outings, which is not bad. I mean, that's still a great place for him to be. And you couldn't expect him to keep up the pace of play that he had through his first 10 games of the season. I understand that. But it's not unrelated to the 123 innings that he's played. And the same goes for Cutter Crawford. And Bayo, I think, is a different conversation. But for much of your rotation that you've been putting such a heavy workload on, and for most of the season, they've been doing a spectacular job. This is a group that needs to be rewarded for their efforts and for their production. You don't just look at them and say, Hey, there were other areas where we need stuff too. And you guys have done pretty, you you guys did fantastic and now you're doing pretty well. So pretty well is good enough. If you actually want to win some games in the postseason, you're going to need this rotation to at least be in the condition that they're in right now. I'm not saying that they have to be who they were in early May and parts of June. I'm not saying that, but you need them to be at this production level. And I just don't think it's sustainable unless you go out and you get another arm, somebody who can at least eat innings for these guys. Yeah, and the the beauty of adding a starting pitcher. That's not James Paxton. Right. (laughs) The beauty of adding a starting pitcher, oh, we'll get to him, is, you know, you could still have uh, a guy who bumps out of the rotation who helps your bullpen. So there's a trickle-down effect there. Uh, You can vote. Red Sox have lost four in a row, including last night. If you stayed up for it, I did. And it was uh, It was ugly. What's their biggest need at the deadline? A starting pitcher, says Mego. A relief arm where the bullpen peed it away again multiple times last night. You can vote there. Uh, You can vote for a right-handed bat uh, or nothing. Sell, which is actually getting a sizable amount of the vote today. I'll update those numbers coming up. But, Arkan, how'd you vote? I have been very vocal about wanting a right-handed power bat. I've said that all along. And really, my reasoning for it is that when you get to the playoffs, you're going to be facing lefties. And if you want to make any noise in the playoffs, then you're going to have to have somebody who can hit righties. If this keeps going on, you don't have to worry about the playoffs. This is five blown saves in four games. Every reliever not named Cam Boozer has blown a save, it seems like, in the last uh, three days here, which is ridiculous. I mean, this is this is a meltdown. Like, this is a legitimate bullpen meltdown that we're seeing right now. And I understand that Martin and Slayton are both injured. And I understand that they've been big, important pieces of this pen. But not to the point that I thought they were holding it all together like this. Like, they, And I understand Jansen's not pitching in Colorado. That's not something that I would have really expected to be such a big problem. He also blew a save the other day, too. So I'm, I'm switching my answer up here. This needs to be addressed right now. It's much more urgent. I think that in the long-term big picture, I still want that right-handed bat, and I agree with you, Mago. They still need a starting pitcher, of course, and I'd be happy taking Paxton. You need more than Paxton. Uh, But right now, more than anything, you have got to do something about this bullpen. It is Three Mile Island melting down. Okay. Uh, Let me add a little bit more uh, recent buzz. Mego mentioned one of the names. This is from Rob Bradford, who we're going to talk about at 430, or talk to, rather, at 430. He joins us every Tuesday here on Jones and Mego with Arkan. Again, Alex Cora will join us mm, 20 minutes from now. Call it. At 230. (laughs) No, no, no. Cora will be joining us at 230 there, Rob. Uh, Latest buzz from Bradfo. According to sources, there's a strong likelihood the Red Sox get in the mix for James Paxton, who was designated for assignment by the Dodgers on Monday, and I'll add parenthetically, stinks. But there will be competition for Paxton services. Considering he... No, I know. He, uh, his team just released him. Uh, he represents a piece of the puzzle. Well, if he stinks so bad, no one's going to pick him up, right? Uh, no, I didn't no. say that. I just well, said, you said he Sox stinks. Ball. If he stinks, then no team's going to want him, right? Well, I didn't say he should be out of baseball stinks. I just said he's not very good. Well, is he going to get picked up quickly, do you think? Uh, no, no, not really. You don't think he will? No, no not really. No. You don't think he's going to get picked up quickly? Oh, because they still got to pay the rest of his contract. Right, do, good we'll play, do good players usually get released by their team? I can't believe we're doing this again. Uh, good players usually get released. Do by guys their team. with an eight and two record and a four four three ERA get released very often? Is that something you see all the time? Seven that, run. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got just the most seven run support. Don't focus on the right. Exactly. Come on. Don't focus a 4-4-3 on the record. Three ERA is not that bad. No, it's also not very good. I didn't say it was uh, very good. I didn't say he doesn't suck. That's all. Okay. Uh, it looks like the Red Sox might claim him, which our Ar- Arcand is praying for apparently because he's really good. I've seen it on TV. Uh, uh, the puzzle here of a few contending teams are thirsty for adding an inning eating veteran starter who can help the club get to the finish line. So that's James Paxton. You want him? I don't. The Red Sox are also looking for a lefty reliever who might be able to get a bit more swing and miss than their current options. All-star Tanner Scott of the Marlins, who's in a contract year, should be at the top of the list. That should be. With the Tigers, Andrew Chafin, also a a viable option. Guys like Andrew Nardi, Garrett Clevenger uh, should also uh, intrigue. 
there's a need to weigh how steep the price is compared to a week from now. I think you should have done this last week. And so I get where you're coming from, Arkim, when you say, well, get a reliever just to cobble things together. They play tonight. Bullpen is decimated. They have a day game tomorrow, so there's a quick turnaround. Mm-hmm. Then they do have an off day in there where maybe you can reset. But, uh-oh, the Yankees come to town. And you know ownership will pay attention to that series as much as they pay attention to anything these days. So I still vote right-handed bat. But relief pitcher is moving up my list. And I'll tell you right now, there's a, a sizable amount of fans who are saying, don't do anything, sell. And I think who that, are you people? I think that's back in play. And I, I don't want that. I don't think the Red Sox should do that. But I tried to tell you guys this yesterday. That Dodgers series, it now made this week exceptionally important for this team to go out, perform, play well, back up the way they played all year. Because if they drop off a cliff, and they're now two games out. Now, they're two games behind the Royals, who they just took two out of three from, which to me means you should add because you're only chasing Kansas City, and you might be better than Kansas City already. Never mind if you add another piece or two. But this week gives ownership the out. I saw this coming yesterday. What I didn't see was they were going to drop off against Colorado. And so to me, between this loss last night and now the Yankees series, if you don't turn things around quickly, I think selling really is in the cards, which is a shame. That's not how I would vote. That's not what I think they should do. I still think they need a right-handed bat. Who was the bum who shut him down last night? It was a bum on Sunday. Another left-handed bum last oh, night. Oh, you mean Cy Young candidate Austin Gomber? Right, thank you. So they're, just, they're getting <laughs> shut With down. That wicked knuckle curve that they kept chasing. <laughs> Do they have a, no, it, no, no, no. It was the umps. Who's the lefty they face tonight? It's another lefty tonight. Yes. Uh, Ty, Ty Block? Oh, Ty Block. Wow. Yeah, Ty Block's getting the start over. Another uh, trash-ass lefty will probably shut him down tonight. This is why you need a right-handed bat. This is why I vote this way. By the way... Two lefties in, I think you're getting Rodon and uh, Nestor Cortez. The oh, so the okay. Yankees have lefties? You I might got th- a couple. If you yeah. get to the postseason, Crazy. you might actually face a lefty. It's not all right-handed pitching there. Oh, okay. Interesting. I saw Rodon just had a nice start the other day. 10 Ks, although he's been dropping off a bit of a cliff. Tanner Houck style. So they should add, but will they add? And I, I at least thought we were clear of the whole, they might sell. I thought we were clear of that, but apparently that's back on the table. Well, I guess we have progressed to now it's they're either going to be on the fence or they're going to do what I qualify as a fake buy, which would be James Paxton, where they'd say. Well, that's not buying. That's just picking up somebody off the scrap heap. That's I know, not, but they'd say trade. we're adding. I agree, by the way. I like Paxton, but I would be not be satisfied with that. No. Yeah. I, I think even if they add like some other small piece onto that, it's like fulfilling needs at the very lowest common definition of what it is. It's not actually trying to improve the team in a meaningful way. Like Cooper Criswell, I am not a huge fan of, but I don't really see that he's so different than James Paxton, except that Cooper Criswell was like eight years younger and you might still be able to add a pitch or something to his repertoire. So I look at that and I go, I don't really think that that's an improvement. The, uh, the point that we're even back at, well, we might sell off somebody like O'Neill or Jansen when you need help especially in your relief, like your relievers, and you were thinking about selling your all-star closer, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's frustrating that they would toe the line and say, we're not picking a lane while the team is playing really well up through the all-star break and actually sends more than one all-star to the game, unlike last year. Yeah, the MVP. And then you come out of it and it's look it was bad last night and it was a really bad series against LA but you hold that up to say well we're back to the middle ground like we're back to we're not even picking a lane we're thinking about just middling it and doing both when even three weeks ago Craig Breslow said that's absolutely not what they're gonna do that he wants to pick a lane they're all over the place 